I know most of your faces. Really great to see you. Um, I'm joined by Charlotte Prince. Charlotte is the Year Group Leader for Year 6, and she's just going to talk about the Year 5-6 behaviour policy, which changes as we get the children ready to transition to secondary. So I'll start with the, uh, the lower primary uh, section. So I arrived at the school in 2015, um, and when I came, the behaviour policy was very consistent across the whole school. Uh, there was a mismatch of uh, rewards um, happening into the classroom, so some classrooms had start the week, we had team points, we had class points, we had raffle tickets, some new stickers. So it was very, very inconsistent. And that was difficult um, for people who were stepping into classrooms to teach us. For example, the Mandarin team going into uh, different classrooms, they had to remember 59 different behaviour policies. So that wasn't right. <laughs> so that wasn't working. So we put together a staff working party to try and make uh, a more consistent approach to the behaviour across the whole school. And this is the list of what the, the working party came up with. So they wanted rules that were consistent and easy to understand. We didn't even have consistent behaviour rules. Um, they wanted systems that encouraged collaborative teamwork. Uh, we wanted to recognise individual rewards. Student voice was very important to us as well. Um, because if the student voice and the children have, uh, have worked on the rewards themselves, they're more motivated to achieve them. We wanted consistency, but we also wanted something that was child-friendly and that was fun. And the working party met several times. We came up with our B theme, which you may be familiar with in the primary school. So the first thing we did was to put together a set of rules that were very, very short and to the point that were encouraging children to be ambitious about their behaviour and to reach for the top. And every rule starts with the word B. It doesn't start with don't. So we said that is that positive slant. Um, we're trying to, from the very start, the rules are about being positive. Um, the rules are the same in every classroom, so we've got that consistent approach, so I can talk to any child about the rules and we're all talking about the same information. And there are reasonable expectations, I'm sure you'll agree, we're not expecting anybody to do anything miraculous, we just want them to follow some very simple rules. And these rules are linked to two different systems, they're linked to our whole class rewards and to our individual rewards. So you may have heard about the golden jar. Is that familiar to you? You've heard about that and how that works? So the, the golden jar has increments that go up the side and they link to the rewards that the children are earning as a team. So this is their group rewards. This is the one that they're working together um, to get to the top of the jar. And we actually start with the rewards. So the children with their teacher, they brainstorm a list of rewards they would like to have. And some of them are fantastic. We've had roller coasters and everything, you can imagine. So we have to tone that down, and the teacher chooses four rewards secretly from the list and places them into the, the golden jar behind the, 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 the yellow colours. So they're placed behind that. The children don't know what they are. They've got an idea of what they could be, but they probably know the roller coaster one isn't enough. And as the rewards uh, go up the jar, the increments get higher, the rewards get longer and more exciting. So they're just having a look at some of the ideas that children come up with. So 10 minutes extra play time, we want about 50 uh, rewards, and maybe wearing home clothes might be when they've reached 200 in the jar. They've all worked together for that. So this is our student voice, and that's why it's really important for us to have that, because the children have chosen have got the brainstorm those rewards that then come from themselves, not the teacher thinking what would make my life really easy. Um, so that's how that works. But the children are working together to accumulate their bees in the bee jar, um, and as we work through the system, they're gaining those rewards. Um, now, golden bees are very exciting, very exciting. They're worth double points, and they're only given out by me. So the children come to me, I've got a, a a jar on my desk, which my mother constantly tops up for me because they go missing around school. And they come to me if they've done something spectacular uh, as a class. Maybe they sat really beautifully in assembly, or I saw them walking around school in a really orderly manner. They come and get their double point golden B. So in terms of our criteria, we've ticked every box, apart from the individual rewards, we're coming on to that. So the rules are consistent, uh, they're very easy to understand, the children know them. Is encouraging that collaborative teamwork which we want. Uh, get everybody on board and work for those rewards. 
It's got the student voice, which is really important to us, so the children come from there. It's not coming from the teacher. There's a consistency, and obviously it's very child-friendly and fun, because they love filling that bee jar. Now, when I'm walking around school, I see children on the carpet, and they're counting the bees. How many have we got? And then they'll say to me, we need one more for our next reward. <laughs> so, topic of conversation on the steps, most mornings. Okay, so we're going to move on to our individual achievements. Um, does this look familiar to most of you? Have you heard the children talk about the bee ladder? Or the learning ladder, it's got different names in different classrooms, but the consistency is there in how it looks. So this particular class is called our behaviour beehive. And the idea is that everybody starts the day as a hard work bee in the middle. And you can see that class, they were all there in the middle, ready for their day. And no matter what happens through the day, everybody goes back to being a hard work bee every day. So we forget the next day if it was a disaster. Um, and we just everybody is back to being in the middle of the bee jar, ready to start their day. Everybody also starts with a, a specific allotted amount of time of golden time, which is on a Friday in years one, two, four. Nursery and reception have a slightly different system. Um, nursery have golden time every day because it's too long to wait to Friday when you're three. You need to be reminded more constantly about that. And the children move up and down the bee hive depending upon what happens with their behaviour throughout the day. So rewards, obviously, they're moving up the beehive and consequences, they're moving down the beehive. Okay, so our rewards, we have three levels of rewards. We have a bronze award and a silver award and a gold award, although EYFS, the little ones, have a platinum one as well because they felt they needed to have an extra step. Uh, so a bronze reward is the, the hard work of bee sticker. Hopefully you've seen your children come home with those stickers on. And hopefully they're proudly put them on the fridge or, or somewhere special. Um, so that's the teacher gives them, them that, that reward. The silver award is when they go to share the news with another class. I've moved it up again and I'm, I'm in a really good place. We want to share that information with another class to get some celebration. And the golden award is the highlight of my day. I uh, had three children come in yesterday to say they've moved to the top of the beehive and they come and they visit me and they get a very special sparkly sticker that says ask me why I got the sticker and a special certificate which we sent home and I say to the children tell me why you moved to the top of the beehive and they either get stage fright and can't remember anything <laughs> or in some occasions they tell me the wrong reasons and I've written them down and the teacher said that wasn't why they got that so I send that certificate back to the teacher to fill in now I don't want any mistakes on it so they, they get uh, the special certificate and there have been occasions when we've all clapped in the office because there's somebody there um, uh, to celebrate with. So that's really lovely that they, they get that. We do um, questions at the end. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So obviously we're dealing with the, the positives with behaviour by moving up the, the, bee, light, the bee ladder. Uh, but we also have to look at how we're going to deal with behaviour that is perhaps not a good choice. We're talking about that le general low level disruptive behaviour, might be talking at the wrong time, disrupting a friend, um, or just not doing, uh, getting on with, with work at the right time. And that's addressed initially by the class teacher. And the children will move down the beehive, um, and so there are three levels of moving down the beehive. And each one does link to a loss of golden time, and it's cumulative. So the first move down the beehive, Probably just make it up the right hand side says one minute. So on Friday you lose one minute of golden time if you have moved down the beehive. The next stage is two minutes, and then the last one is five, and that's cumulative. Um, it does happen. It's, it's rare that people get right to the bottom of the beehive, but it does happen. We do have to have that. We do have to have that consequence. If a child is not getting the message from their teacher, they'll talk to the year group leader. They may be asked to talk to the deputy head uh, of their area and on very, very rare occasions I've had to have a conversation with a child myself because things are not working out. The plan is not to get a child to the bottom of the beehive. <laughs> the plan is to get them back up to being a hard worker bee. So if somebody has moved down to the first level uh, of their one minute of golden time, the teacher will be really trying to get them back up as soon as we can. We don't want them to get into that spiral, which, which can easily happen. So we're looking for a positive as soon as we can to get the children back to being a hard worker bee so they can make their way up the beehive. Okay? 
that is basically the behaviour policy for EYFS all the way to year four. Um, and I've got Mr. Prince here now, who is going to talk to you about year five and six. Um, just, can I just have a show of hands if you have got a child in year five and six, just so I know who I'm talking to and who you're going to Okay, so we follow a staggered approach to secondary, um, and as I've spoken to most of you about transition anyway, the behaviour policy also follows that staggered approach, um, and it's really important that we're preparing children for secondary, um, but we're also giving them the positive reinforcement that they get from primary school, uh, nursery to year four as well. So we follow the school code. Uh, there are five simple rules for the children to follow, uh, and this is also used in secondary as well. Okay, so you may have heard of learning reminders. Um, if you haven't, you, you probably will. Um, and if you've got a child in year four, this is something that we also um, need to prepare them for as well. So learning reminders about developing the independence. Um, and making the children responsible for their behaviour. So there are stages of con consequence, just like Ms. LeBay was talking about for nursery to year four. It's a very similar approach. So stage one, and I'll show you um, what, what they may get them for in a moment. Uh, one learning reminder is one point. If the children collect three learning reminders, collect, um, then it results in a break time detention. Uh, and then they move on to stage two. Now obviously during that time there's communication with parents um, via email or having a chat about uh, the child's behaviour. Uh, three learning minds or more is a lunchtime detention and stage three parents will have been contacted before this stage and it's an after school detention and we're still now doing uh, our day to head. Stage four I've never been involved in um, but you know it does it does happen in secondary which is the learning reminders are cleared at the end of every half term, so again, it's a fresh start for, for, the, uh, for the children. Um, as I've said to you, this is a staggered approach, so in, as they go into secondary, they may receive a learning reminder for forgetting their student planner, or not doing their homework. Um, those, those are just a few examples, which results in a 15 minute detention. So we're just trying to get them prepared, we're not trying to scare them, um, but it is important that they're developing that independence. Those are some of the learning monitors that they, uh, the children will be issued for. Okay, moving on to the positives, not all negative in your politics. So we have many rewards, very similar to, to the primary school, to the national to year four. Uh, the children made them home with a praise postcard. Um, so that can be written by the class teacher, by the head of year, or by Mr. Bay. Um, the children will receive their certificates, so that's part of our vision poster as well. And the one that children love the most is our class rewards. Now this is like the equivalent as the, um, the B, the fizzy bees. Um, I'm not sure whether fizzy bees have the same effect in year five or six. So we, we, we've moved them along to class points. Um, instead. So the children collect class points and they can be given one class point um, by a class teacher, could be by a specialist. If they've done something really great they may receive 10 class points, no more than 10. Um, and every 200 points the children get a reward. Um, this is decided together as a class, um, again developing their independence so we don't hide it from them. Uh, we brainstorm some ideas and then we select them carefully. Um, it progresses as they go through, so 200 class points would be something like extra break time, uh, 400 maybe uh, non-uniform. We've had parties, we've, we've had movie afternoons, um, so the children really do love collecting the points. Um, and they have a little competition between the classes as well, um, so that's, that's a really nice uh, chance for them to work together as a class. Right, okay, I'm going to move on uh, just very briefly to obviously the bus rules we have as well. We do have uh, situations where we have to talk to children about their behaviour on the buses. And again, I say to them, we're not asking you to do anything spectacular. We're asking you to do normal things to keep you safe and to keep you well. So obviously no food and drinks, being polite, 
uh, and friendly, listening to the adults, staying in your seat, wearing a seatbelt and using quiet voices. Now we do have to follow up on behaviour. Any serious problems come straight to me and I deal with that uh, immediately. Our bus centres have been trained to deal with low level behaviour and they will complete a behaviour form if there's an issue which is returned to me and then I give it to the class teacher to follow up with the child. And it is a tick box that tells us what the child did. Um, so it's very easy for us to, to follow uh, without having to speak to the bus centre. You can see what, what's been happening. Three um, bus misbehaviour forms and I will get in touch with the parent to have a conversation. Um, and basically to let them know that if there's another one within the next four weeks that they will need to make alternative arrangements for their child um, for five days. And we have had to do that. Rarely, but we have, had, we have followed that through before. We have had to do that. Usually it gets three and I say to the child as well, do you know what's going to happen next? Your parents have to bring you to school, which is very inconvenient because actually they put you on the bus because it's convenient and we tend to get a reaction there from, from the child realising they're going to be in big trouble if it gets to um, make an alternative arrangements. Okay, so that's basically how uh, we're dealing with our, our bus behaviour as well. Now we do have a few minutes, I don't think Spencer's got to get back to class, but we do have a few minutes for questions. If there's anything that links with the policy, we don't want to discuss your individual children's behaviour, that's something to talk to a class teacher about, but if there's anything that we can do just to clarify any points of the policy.